Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineering Training Program. Yesterday we started with a quick demo class that was introduction to AWS or you can say introduction to cloud computing. And we also talked about the limitations, the benefits of cloud computing. And to do all the hands-on, we also talked about how to create a trial account. So my trial account is ready. That means today onwards, everything I will explain, I will be demonstrating practically as well. Today's class is basically for IAM service. That's a very important service in AWS. Everything you do, every action you perform on AWS that is controlled through some permissions. And this permission part is known as IAM, which stands for Identity Access Management. What this is all about, what are the different components, how we can control the permissions, everything we will be exploring today and we'll be doing practically. So let's start the class with the agenda. So the agenda for today's class is overview of IAM service, root account versus IAM user, MFA, multi-factor authentication, IAM user, IAM groups, IAM roles, AWS managed policies, and creating customer managed policies. You don't need to remember all this thing. We'll be doing everything practically. Okay. So let's start. I will, instead of going through the slides, rather I will show you everything on my trial account. These slides are definitely useful for you, for your reference, but I usually do everything on the uh, trial account. So first of all, let me log in. Okay. So you must have noticed one thing that I'm logging in with my email address and password, but is that really that safe? Because suppose somehow someone get to know my email address and my password. That means anyone can log in into my AWS account. And you may be thinking like if someone will log in, then what is the harm? There can be any, I can say harm. They can do anything. Suppose they launch hundred servers with a high configuration, 64 GB of RAM and five terabytes of hard disk and much more. You know who will be in loss? Because ultimately your card, your credit card, your debit card is linked with your AWS account. And if there is any usage going beyond the free limit, you will be charged for that. Just like nowadays, almost every uh, login service, they are offering MFA, multi-factor authentication. That means along with username and password, there should be one more factor that is making your account more protected. The ultimate purpose is that there are hackers who are like, uh, uh, well, I mean, they are, they are staying in altogether different remote countries and somehow they will hack your system. They can do a lot of bad stuff. They can launch a lot of server. They can install some ransomware or there can be some more, uh, you can say challenges. So how to enable MFA that I will show you. First of all, I will go to IAM service. First for IAM and you can see the tagline. It says manage ex <coughs> access to AWS resources. Right now we have a root user. Root user means the user who created the account. You are the full privileged user. You are the admin. You can do anything, including termination of your account. But definitely if there is a developer's team. I have supposed 10 developers in my team. I defi definitely cannot allow all people joining as a root user. That's not a good idea, right? Because if by mistake, if someone is deleting any service or deleting the account itself, that's not good. So apart from root user, there are other users, which we known as IAM user. And those users will be having very limited access. As a root user, we will decide like what type of access we will grant. And accordingly, that user will be able to use only those services. Okay. So as soon as you will open IAM service, as you can see, it is displaying a warning. They are saying add MFA for the root user. Right? Right now, MFA is not added. That means your account is not secure. So what we will do is you will click on add MFA. That's quite easy process. And that's one time setup. Okay. That we don't need to do every day. So you have to use some, uh, there are different options. One is pass key or security key. And the third option, you can see hardware T or TP token. I remember like few years back, five to eight years back, my company has given me small device 
which was displaying some um, some OTP type of thing, like six digit code. And every time I was logging into some service, I just simply look at the device, small device, just like a pen drive, and just copy the code into the system. But nowadays with an advancement of technology, we do not need to buy any type of device or any type of hardware. Rather, we can go with this one, Authenticator app. That's most convenient method. Simply go to your uh, Play Store or ICE, uh, App Store and you can install. That would be very convenient way. And which app to install, that also we'll talk about. So you can put some name, anything. You can simply say, my phone. That's all. Because I will be installing MFA on my phone. And let's click on next. It will give you the flexibility to install app. There are a lot of apps. You can see here. Install a compatible application such as Google Authenticator, Duo Mobile, Authy app, or much more. See a list of compatible applications. I usually go with the first one, Google Authenticator. That is already installed on my phone because prior to this batch, the previous batch also I was like using that. So I already have installed that. The next step is show the QR code. So click on this. It will display the QR code. Let me go to the app, Authenticator app, and I will scan this QR code. Okay. Yes, that is done. Now you can see that after scanning, it's asking me to enter code, two conjunctive code. Wait 30 seconds and enter a second code entry, right? So I will enter the first code. Just give me a moment. So my first code is four four two seven nine eight. Okay. I will wait for 30 seconds because after 30 seconds my code will change in my app. And I will enter the next code. As I told you, this is one time setup. Tomorrow onwards, we don't need to do all this thing. But yes. Every time you will log in, you need to enter username. That means that means your email address, then password, and this six digit of code from your app. So my code is about to change. Yes, two three zero six two eight, and click on add MFA. And that's all. Yeah, perfect. So if you go back to uh, the page I am right now, let me refresh this yes so you can see that earlier it was displaying a warning that the root user does not have mfa but now there's a green tick and you can see that root user has mfa enabled it's improving the security of your account so that if someone is getting the access to your username and password they're still not able to join not able to log in into your account that is the ultimate purpose okay so i'm stopping here for two minutes in case anyone is having any doubt till now you can ask me Otherwise, we'll be moving to the next topic. So, where to download this authenticator app? Any anything. I mean, go to Play Store or iPhone. I mean, App Store. You can download it from there. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So let's come back to the next category. The next is users. As I was telling you that root user we are logging in for admin stuff only suppose i am adding a user i am managing some permissions or i am looking into some billing per billings and all that stuff right only for those things we will be uh, using our root user since the root user has all the privilege so if you are using a root user definitely you will not face any permission issue but in real time scenario in actual project you need to create many more users and those users will be granted with some limited permissions there is a concept of bare minimum permission that means today, if you are supposed to work on only one service, so as a root user, as an admin, I should provide only permission to only that service. That's all. Not beyond that. Tomorrow, after one week, you say, okay, now I will work on two more services. I can add more permissions as and when required. But let's not uh, give a lot of permissions blindly. That's not a good practice. So as of now, you can see there is no IM user created here. But let's create that. I will click on create user and username. I can say I am user Neeraj. You can give any, any name, it's up to you. And provide user access to AWS management console. You may be thinking that if user is not getting the permission to AWS management console, then what type of permission he or she will be getting? AWS management console is nothing but whatever UI I have opened. 
So basically, UI is only one way to interact with AWS account. There are many more ways. You can even interact through the commands. Forget about browser, forget about login. You can you have the you have the terminal from the commands also you can interact with AWS. Whatever you want to do, you can do that. Programming language also you can use. Using Java, using Python, you can interact with AWS services. That's possible. But along with programmatic access, I would like to give the AWS management console as well. So that just like root, root user is logging into the UI, similarly other users should also be logging in. But yes, they will be having limited access. They cannot do each and everything. After that, the next one is there are two options. Specify a user in identity center. That's the recommended way. Or you can, that's a new thing. Maybe you can go with the this one. I want to create an IAM user. That you can do. Okay. So let me create this first. After that, we'll try this one also. Let me see what is that all about. But I will create an IAM user first. What about password? You want to go with auto generated password, some random alphanumeric, or you want to custom password. So let's do custom. You can do that. Okay, I have set some password and after that you user must create a new password at next sign in. It's up to you. If you are setting some random password like password at the rate one, two, three, something like that. In that case, you are expecting that the user should be able to log in one time with that password. And after that, the user should immediately change the password. If that is your requirement, you check this box. In that case, AWS will, uh, you can say prompt them to change the password. Otherwise, if you are okay, you can skip that also. That's fine. I'm skipping it because whatever password I'm setting here, I will be using this IAM user and this password for doing a lot of activities, a lot of practicals in our upcoming classes. So I am clicking on next. <clears throat> okay. So creating a user is fine. Password is okay. What about the permission? That's the most important part because without permission, even if I'm able to log in, and if I'm not able to do anything, then there is no point, right? So how to add the permission? There are many ways to do it. The first way is add users to a group. Most convenient one. Suppose you already have one group, suppose with the name developer and you have already granted some permission and this Monday, some new developer has joined your team. So you are very much clear that this new user should get the exactly same permission as other developers. So you can directly add that user to the group. As of now, we do not have any group, so it's fine. We'll not go with that option. Second option is copy permission. Maybe there is another guy, there is another developer and you granted some permission to that user and you want to exactly match it, exactly uh, copy, copy that. So you can go with that option. Even if that is not available because you notice like I'm creating my first IAM user. So there is no one from, from whom I can copy. The last but not the least option is attach policies directly. That's a good option. You can see that there are permissions tailored by AWS and there are thousand plus permissions. A lot of permissions are there. S3 is one of the service. I'm not sure whether you heard, heard about S3 or not, but S3 is about storage. If you, everyone uses Google Drive, right? Google Drive is a cloud distributed storage provided from Google side. Similarly, S3 is similar thing. S3 is a distributed cloud storage provided by AWS. That means you can store your data. You can put your input files over there, input data over there. You can uh, analyze the data. I mean, processing part, analysis, analysis part will be definitely done by some other service. But the point is input data and your output data will be stored on S3. So I'm searching for S3 service and you can see that there are different services available. Amazon S3 full access, Amazon S3 read only access, and there are a lot many more. So for now, to get started, I will give Amazon S3 full access. That means this user will be able to do anything on S3. It can create a new file. It can copy a file. It can delete the file. It can create the directories and much more. If you would like to suppose there's a user and the user is not from your team, maybe from a different team. And the user is interested to read the data. That's all. The user should not be able to add more data, should not be able to add a new folder and should not be allowed to delete my data. But yes, if the user want to read it, he should be allowed. In that case, you can go with this permission, read only. 
Amazon S3 read only access. You can even go with that. But for now, to get started, I'm going with Amazon S3 full access. Click on next. You can review the details quickly. This is my username, I am user nearest. Custom password I have set up. Required password reset, no. I don't need to change the password. And permission, Amazon 3 full access. And that's all. Tags. Tags is there, right? Tags are basically non-technical stuff. And it's optional. If you want to add some tag, you can do that. For example, I would say, mm, suppose there are few team members, right? Few team members are like developers. Few team members are testers. Maybe you are having a, uh, you can say wristband or you are having a cap or you are having a t-shirts, right? For some event. So every developer is wearing a t-shirt with the name developers written on it. Similarly, tester team is writing tester, right? So it's just a identification, okay? This team, this green t-shirt team where developer is mentioned, this is one team. And this uh, blue one with tester is written, that is different team. So this developer and tester is just a identification. Same thing is here. If you want to add some tag to this user, you can do that. And there is no technical significance. It's up to you if you want to add. Just for additional information. For example, I will add a new tag and I will say that, for example, team name. Okay. I would say team name. And suppose this is navigator. I'm just giving some random name. Okay. So maybe this user is part of some navigator team or I'm just adding that tag. Otherwise, there is no technical significance. <coughs> That's all. So you can see here, user is successfully created. You can view and download the user's password and email instruction for signing in to the AWS Management Console. So you can copy this thing. This is the URL and you can notice that this URL is specific to your AWS account because it contains a unique AWS account ID and then the username and then the password. You can copy this stuff from here and you can email to your user. To your team member they should be able to log in with the username and password if they want to enable mfa for their account for their iam user account they can do that just like we enabled mfa with the help of that authenticator app for the root user similarly individual iam user if they want if they want to make their account more secure they can also enable mfa okay so that's all i will be clicking on return to the user list and that's all. So I'm taking a pause here. In case anyone is having any type of doubt till now, you can ask me. Okay, seems like there is no doubt. Let me quickly check. Uh, Abhi, do you have any doubt? You can unmute yourself and you can confirm if there is any doubt from your side. Mm, you are not audible. I, I noticed that you unmuted yourself, but you are not audible. Anyway, uh, that's fine. Let's move to the next section. <laughs> So we talked about users. Uh, like... Niraj, one question. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, there are different cloud services that we use on a daily basis, like mm -hmm. iCloud or maybe uh, Google Drive uh, or whatever cloud we get with Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, so are they similar to whatever S3 uh, that you mentioned? Okay, so S3 is more more from a like a I would say. Uh, data engineering project point of view google drive you may be using for a personal use like you are putting your photos your videos or anything right but s3 we are not using for our personal use s3 is mainly for your data engineering or any type of project mainly input data we will put into s3 that can be csv format or excel format or any other type of format and then we will be processing the data with the help of other services which we will be exploring in upcoming classes and after data analysis after data processing the output file will be written back into S3. Okay. There will be dedicated class for S3. So don't worry about it. Tomorrow's class and the day after tomorrow's class will be fully dedicated for S3. 
Okay, so um, be because what I thought is uh, similar to what uh, what the personal access we have uh, to the personal cloud, mm. uh, whatever I am you created, I was assuming like uh, since uh, for any particular Windows uh, user, uh, we have some login credentials, similar kind of I am is there for S3 also. No, 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 it's, it's no, nowhere related to your Windows or anything. It's altogether your AWS account. If you have created your AWS trial account or in your companies, if you have actual AWS account, only within AWS account, mm -hmm. you will be able to access S3. It's not like publicly available. Okay. Yeah. Just like in order to use Google Drive, first you need an email address of Google, right? Gmail. Then only you will be able to use. So you need to create an AWS account. Then only you will be able to use S3. What S3 is, and there are a lot of things about S3. We will be exploring in full detail tomorrow in tomorrow's class. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Let's move to the next category. The next one is user group. So today one developer uh, joined and I created a username for that user and I added some permission that makes sense, right? Tomorrow, someone else will join next week. Some other people are joining every time. If I'm adding the new permissions, that's not a good idea difficult to manage rather I can create a group and I can give some permission to the group group itself. In that case, tomorrow if someone is joining, I will simply add that user to the group. Very simple. It's like there's a WhatsApp group and you simply someone wants to join. So you can directly add that user to the group and every message, every communication is happening in that particular uh, group. The new user will also be getting that. That's the same thing we will do here. So there is no group as you can see. I will be clicking on create group, provide some name. I will say developers. Okay. And do you would, uh, would you like to add some users? If you want, you can do that. If you don't want to do at this point of time, maybe later you will add the user. You can do that, but let me do right away because I am user nearest is available. So I will be doing that. And then would you like to give some permission to this group? Let me search. There is a service Redshift. Okay, we will be exploring that service in upcoming classes, but just to show you Redshift, right? Redshift is a database service from AWS. So you can see that Amazon Grafana Redshift, not this Amazon Redshift full access, Amazon Redshift query editor. I will go with this one. Okay. And I will click on create user group. So one thing you must, if you have noticed the IAM user near as was already having one permission. And one permission we added on the group. So ultimately that user will be getting two permissions. Let's check it out. So I will, why it is saying zero users, zero. I added the user, right? Mm, let me check again. There is no user. Why? Maybe I missed that. Let's add it now. No, not an issue. Click on I am user nearest and add user. That's all. Yeah, we are good. Now, if you go back to the user section and if you check the permission for I am user nearest, you will find two permissions over there. Let it load and then we'll talk about it. You can see that Amazon Redshift query editor and this permission is attached via developers group. That means this permission is not directly attached to the user. If you remove this permission from the group, ultimately it will be removed from the user as well. But another one, Amazon S3 full access, it's directly attached. That means there is no uh, connection with the group. You remove this user from the group or you remove the permission uh, from the group. It will not impact Amazon S3 full access will be linked with the user until or unless you are explicitly removing from the user itself. Okay. So this way we can create uh, groups. You can create even multiple groups. And accordingly, you can do. So I am stopping here for two minutes. If you're having any doubt, you can ask me. Okay. So when we created the user, there was two options, right? One is simple I am user. There is one more way. Let me explore that. That's a new feature. I never explored that, but let's try. Okay. I will say I am user 
Praveen. Okay. And provide access to management console. Okay. We'll go with this first option this time. Let me read that. What is that? We recommend that you use identity center to provide console access to a person. With identity center, you can centrally manage user access to their AWS account and cloud application. Okay. Same only. I don't see any difference because we, we, even with IAM user, we can do the same thing. But let's try. Click on next. This will take you to AWS Identity Center console. Okay, let's go. So AWS is very like, um, I would say every new day, every week, every month, you will notice that they are adding new features. So they're saying enabling IAM Identity Center. First of all, I'm not sure whether it's chargeable or not. So maybe we'll not try that. IAM Identity Center makes it easy to connect an AWS existing directory or use built-in Identity Center directory to manage user access to AWS application and multiple AWS accounts. Okay, I think we don't need it. I will tell you. Suppose you are working in a company and you your company has your credentials, right? Not AWS, your company credential. You log in into your system, laptop, right? Same credentials can be used to log in into AWS. For that one, this IAM Identity Center is useful. That's what they are saying. They are saying that you can easily connect to an existing directory. That means directory services or use built-in identity center directory to manage user access to AWS applications with multiple AWS accounts. Suppose you have dev account, you have staging account, you have testing environment, you have production environment. So with the same username and password, you can manage access to multiple AWS accounts. That is not the requirement as of now, because we are uh, using this account for training purpose. There is no company login, there is no multiple accounts. So we are good with that uh, normal option like creating IAM user. But for your extra knowledge, you should be aware that there is a way in IAM to create the user directly from your LDAP services or directly from your directory services. So I will not be doing it. I will be closing this. <clears throat> you can see this. Enable IAM Identity Center. After that, it will be connecting to your company's directory service. And from there, you will be able to log in into suppose one account, suppose development or another account like production. Okay. So that's all. I will be closing this tab coming back to let's cancel this. Cancel this as well. And yeah, I'm back to IEM console. So again, I'm stopping here. Any doubt till now, please feel free to ask. Otherwise we'll be moving to the next category. <laughs> Okay, the next one is roles. Right now, we talked about only user. But in AWS, right, forget about user, even any service, they also need some permission. Let me give you an example. Suppose you launched one server. Now from that server, you would like to connect to a database, or you would like to read some data from S3, or you may be interested to write something back into S3. Basically, your server will be performing some actions. Now, as I, as I told in the beginning, each and every step you do in AWS is controlled through permissions. That means your server cannot do anything without permission. Even your server need permission for doing anything. So for human being, we create users and for services, for server, for anything, we create roles and the role will be associated with the server. So whatever permission you will give to that role, Ultimately, the server will be getting all those permissions and the server will be able to perform only those actions. Note beyond that. Let's try. I will be clicking on create role and for which service you would like to create a role. Although you can create for any AWS service, but to get started, I will be creating for EC2. Yesterday I was talking about EC2, right? EC2 is nothing but a remote server. So go into this drop down and search for EC2, it's available on the top and click on next. What type of permission you would like to give? So suppose I will give, uh, hold on, uh, S3, but this time instead of full access, I will give S3 read only access. Okay, that means my server, I mean, right now I'm not attaching to a server, right now I'm creating a role only. Maybe in upcoming class, when I will create a server, 
I will show you how to attach this role to the server. You can launch a server without any IAM role as well. That's possible. But only server will be running. It won't be doing anything. It won't, it cannot interact with any other AWS service. So as soon as you will try to do something, it will throw the error. And then you will realize that, yes, I need a role for this server and I need proper permissions. So to get started, I am just adding one permission, Amazon S3 read only. If you want, you can even add multiple permissions. But for now, we are good. This one and clicking on next. Provide some meaningful name. I would say I am uh, not I am. I would say EC2 server I am role. It's meaningful. Okay. And the description is allow EC2 instance to call AWS services on your behalf. If you want to change it, it's a meaningful description, but if, if you want to change it, you can do that. And the permission you can notice here, Amazon S3 read only permission we are giving tags. As I told you, it's optional. If you want to add, you do this, do this. If you don't want to do it, it's absolutely fine. We'll click on create role. That's all. It's very easy. So role has been created, but until or unless the role is not attached to any service, there is no meaning. It's like there's an access card placed in your drawer. No employee or no one is using that card. Then there is no point, right? Only when some visitor or when some employee will wear that card and will be using that card for opening the gates and all, then only it will be meaningful. Right now, the role is created. In upcoming class, we'll create a server and then you will understand in more better way. So with this one, we are even done with the roles. In case you're having any doubt, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll be moving to the next section that is policy. Okay, seems like there is no doubt. So that's good. Let's move to the next one policy. <clears throat> you must have noticed that whether I created a user or I created a group or I created a role, ultimately I was searching for some policy, right? And the good part is these policies are managed by AWS. You can see that 1,201, lot of thousands, you can say thousand plus policies, pre-created policies are available. That means you can directly search here and you can find some read only or full access permission and you can attach it. That's possible. But sometime you may say that I do not want to go with this these policies, which are AWS managed, you see that these policies are managed by AWS. Maybe you would like to go with a custom policy. You want something more than read only, but something less than full access, or maybe within read only, you would like to customize because within read only also, there are a lot of options and you would not, don't want to provide all the options. Maybe you are saying, okay, I would like to out of this 10 action, only four action I would like to allow. That means if you are going beyond these AWS managed policy, that means you can create your own policy as per your requirement. You can customize it. So you can see the on the right side, there is option, click policy, click on that and which service you want. I will take S3 to get started. So S3 we have, yes, click on S3. Now under S3, as I told you, there are a lot of sections. You see that under list section, there are 15 permissions and you can see that list access grants, list access point, list bucket, list job and much more. As I am customizing it, I don't want to do all list action. I don't want that. I will go with a specific one. So maybe I will go with list bucket, list job and list bucket version. That's all. Okay. Now go to the next category read. Under read, you can see that there are 60 options. That means AWS is managing the permission at very granular level, very low level. That means each and sm every small action, you can, you can decide whether you want to allow or not. So under read category, there are many. I will take only selected ones. Suppose I will say get bucket location, get bucket ACL. And there's a get object. Yeah, this is required. I mean, this is basically reading your data. Without this, you won't be able to get your file. So get object I am selecting. 
and get object attributes or maybe anything else it's up to you and for more detail every permission has info you click on that and you can read this what is the what is the purpose of this so if i click on get object info grant permission to retrieve objects from amazon s3 basically to get the file it would be required okay similarly coming down would you like to give any permission for the right no we don't want any permission for management tagging no those are not required i mean you can you can choose if you want but we are good now okay now this permission whatever you said get object get object attributes these are applicable to all the buckets or specific bucket bucket is nothing but a okay in google drive first of all there is no similar concept google drive you can directly create a folder and you can start uploading your data but in s3 before you start uploading the data the very first thing you need to do is creating a bucket bucket is like what i would what i would correlate is like i would say it's a folder name but it's a unique unique across aws not only within your account that means if i have created a bucket with some name you won't be able to create the bucket with the same name in your aws account you can't do that bucket name are unique across entire aws so you may have multiple buckets suppose you have five buckets so this permission you would like to provide for all the buckets in that case you can keep it all or if you would like to give for a specific bucket in that case you can go with specific for now we do not have any s3 bucket because we even haven't talked about s3 service so it's fine we'll go with all and that's all click on next <clears throat> provide some policy name i would say my s3 custom policy okay provide some meaningful name i would say customized s3 access for navigator project i'm just providing a meaningful description because tomorrow if someone will use this policy they should know what this policy is all about just like we are able to search within aws managed policy similarly you can even attach custom policy to your user to your role to your group you can do that i will show you how to do that so i am putting a meaningful name meaningful description permission already limited permissions are there from list category and from read category some limited permissions we have like uh, selected right tags again option and click on create policy that's all so your custom policy has been created and it's available for use if you want to attach this policy to your group to your role to your user you can do that let's try that i will go to my suppose uh, roles okay we'll go to roles and we created ec2 server im role right so come to the permission section earlier i added amazon s3 read only access that was provided by aws suppose i am not happy with this i don't want this i want my own customized policy so you can remove it and you can add your one or if you want to keep both even that's possible so let's let's add first removing we can do later let's add so add attach policy search for that what was the name my s3 customized yes oh, this one only my s3 custom policy and you can see the description also customize s3 access for navigator project so select this add permission and that's all you see now it will display two permissions on this role the first one with a aws icon as well as the type says aws managed another one that does not have aws icon because that's not managed by aws and under type category it is saying customer managed because we are managing this that's all yeah if you would like to add this policy to your users directly or to the users group directly even that's possible that you can do and at any point of time tomorrow suppose someone says that okay i need a few more permissions to this custom policy you can any time come back to the policy and edit this and wherever it is attached it will be automatically reflected over there so i am stopping here again for 2 minutes in case you are having any doubts please ask And did you say uh, whatever uh, roles uh, that we define, it is defined to 
uh, the AWS services, right? Yes. And uh, not to user. So whatever uh, policies we will define, uh, that will be only uh, useful for roles, now. No, you can attach to the user also. I can go to users. I created IAM user nearest. If you want to attach that policy here, you can do that. Okay. So, but but the roles will be only uh, specific to AWS services, not to the users. Correct. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I will I will add more uh, one one more point to that. Roles are definitely for AWS services, but roles can be attached to a user as well. I will tell you. One user may be playing different roles. In in real time, we are playing different roles, right? We are playing brother role, father role, son's role, right? The person is same. Same thing is here. As a user, you would like to do something. You would like to uh, suppose read some data, write some data. So you can use one role. And for other things, you can use some other different role. Mainly roles are used with services only, servers only. But at some different situation, different role can be associated with user as well. I will tell you. Suppose from a third party tool. Suppose you are you are having a Python code and you are connecting to the uh, some service, some Redshift service or something. So you need to provide your username, your password. Along with that, you can provide different roles. Because different roles can perform different things. Maybe at one place, one user is behaving as a read only user and other place, the user is maybe having admin privilege, working as a, a read, write permission, delete permissions as well. So this way a user can use multiple roles as well. Okay. So IAM service is something which we will be using every day. Today's class is dedicated for IAM service. That's true. But in each and every class, here and there, we will be talking about IAM role because that would be required. Without permission, we cannot do. So I will keep on coming back on IAM many times to add some permission, to modify something, to remove some permission. So slowly and gradually in upcoming classes, you will get more clarity on IAM. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's good. Let me come back to the slides. I did not go through the slides, but I think we have covered almost everything. So we started with enabling MFA. You should also do that. And after that, the next thing we talked about users. I added one user. You can also do that. User groups we talked about, roles we talked about, policies we talked about, and we created one custom policy as well. Okay. So that's all about today's class. Uh, usually first week I keep the classes like very light so that you guys can get started. Second week onwards, we will be like uh, picking up the speed. So if there is any doubt from today's class, I'm still here. We can clarify your doubts.